Welcome back. This is a really fun video about real-time simulation on the web for the fixed stars and lunar mansions. Let's get started. So we will be using a software that is web-based called StellariumWeb.org. In this software, we will be able to navigate the night sky and the day sky for that matter uh, and locate uh, interesting things such as stars and planets and galaxies and constellations. We'll be able to find the Sun, the Moon, you know, the, the, the Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, all these planets. And we'll be able to do a search. And um, incidentally, uh, I have taken a snapshot of this software that will allow you to locate the center of the Milky Way galaxy. This is a very special place in our galaxy. It's the, it's the uh, black hole. It's easily found, fortunately, if you look for the Sagittarius constellation on the left-hand side here, you'll see that the arrow of the, of the Sagittarius is pointing directly to this dark area over here between the Scorpio uh, uh, constellation and the Sagittarius constellation, okay, just in between them. So this area is the center of the Milky Way galaxy. All right, let's keep going. So uh, just a little background for those who have no idea what this is about. Of course, we live in a solar system where the uh, sun is at the center of this uh, solar system and all the planets revolve around the sun or orbit around the sun. Each of the planets have its own period of uh, orbiting around the sun. Uh, and we, we will be using, the, the, of course, the Earth as the benchmark of this, which is uh, one solar year, 365 days. Based on a previous video that I, I uh, uh, uploaded recently regarding the space-time cycles, I have here a reminder of the, the period of time that will take each of the planets to revolve around the Sun. And Mercury takes 88 days, Venus is 225 days, the Sun of course is one year, which we are, are familiar with. Uh, of course the Earth has one moon. Um, Mars is 1.88 years, uh, Ceres uh, is 4.7 years, Jupiter 11.86 years, Saturn uh, 20, 29.42 years, um, Uranus 83 years, and just uh, fast forward to the last one, which is Sedna, 11,000 years, isn't that something? So um, let's keep going. So referring to the Quran, the Book of Islam, I'm going to read a couple of verses that... Uh, confirm uh, some of the things that were, uh, dis that were discovered by science in our current century, but they were, um, uh, of course, mentioned in the Quran and other uh, scriptures, such as uh, the Vedas, the Surya Siddhanta, and um, the Torah and the Bible to some extent. So let's review together what these things are. I will read them in Arabic and... Um, uh, I will, you can read the translation in English later on. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Tabarak al-Ladhi ja'ala fi s-samai burujan wa ja'ala fiha sirajan wa qamran munira Surah Al-Furqan Wal-Qamara qaddarnahu manazila hatta aada kal-urjoon al-Qadim Surah Yasin لا الشمس ينبغي لها أن تدرك القمر ولا الليل سابق النهار وكل في فلك يسبحون سورة ياسين فلا أقسم بمواقع النجوم وأنه لقسم لو تعلمون عظيم سورة الواقعة وأنه هو رب الشعر سورة النجم most people don't know what that is. I will explain that in a moment. A shara is a star that is supposed to be the brightest star in the sky. I will explain which one it is in a moment. 
So Selenium Web is this uh, web-based application that's uh, free to use by anyone. Uh, all you have to do is type in selenium-web-web.org and you can get there. So uh, what to expect when you get there? You, you need to go through the view settings, uh, turn on the Milky Way Galaxy, which has 17 billion stars, uh, DDS, Data Disposition System. I'm not really sure what this is. This is not really my expertise. You can turn on the meridians, which is the north, south, east, west directions. The ecliptic, which is the orbit of the uh, path of the Earth and planets around the sun. Um, and uh, what can you do besides turning on these settings? You can set the location map by city. Uh, that will be the latitude and longitude, the meridians of the, of the Earth. You can turn on and off the planets. Tonight, the landscape, deep sky objects such as other galaxies, uh, galaxies such as the Andromeda Galaxy, the azimuth grid, the equatorial grid, atmosphere, constellations, constellation art. You can search for the location of the sun and the moon and other planets along the ecliptic. You can, uh, you can search for the center of the Milky Way Galaxy, which I just showed you where it is near the era of the Sagittarius. And of course... You can search for Orion's belt, right? The, the three stars that are aligned with each other, almost aligned. Orion is that uh, the Greek or and Roman, uh, you know, mythical uh, person who, whose, whose belt uh, contains three aligned stars. We can search for the Althoreia, which is in the constellation of Taurus. Burj al Thawr, uh, al in Arabic, of course. Uh, and then, um, uh, or you can also search for the brightest scar in the sky, which is called Sirius. It used to be called uh, Isis in the Egyptian mythology in ancient Egypt, and the Quran is mentioned as a Shara. Okay, so let's move to the terrarium web.org. So please uh, give it a try and let me know what you think. Okay, so we are now in google.com. We're going to search for a, a website called stellarium-web.org. And this is going to take us to this right here. Okay, so I actually have it open in another, web, another um, uh, tab. So first we're going to go to the view settings and we're going to search for a location, right? Uh, right now the location is not set, it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. So we're going to set it, we're going to search for a city around the world. You know, let's let's start by searching for two extreme cities, okay? For example, um, let's take a look at, uh, you know, Sitka, Alaska. Okay, this is in Alaska, okay? And here it is. So Sitka, Alaska is a is a really a, uh, is a city that's way up north, and we're going to use this location. All right. So um, the, what do we notice? The first thing we notice is that uh, we before we start adding all this stuff, this right here. What is it? That's that's a artificial satellite called Cosmos twenty three sixty R. So, uh, interesting, huh? So, not only it shows the natural satellites and natural planets uh, and, and the galaxies and, and, the, and the stars, but also shows the, the artificial ones. So, that's, that's great. Um, and because this is real time, huh? This is like, it's happening right now as we speak. We can see Mars over here and Uranus. And we are, we have, there's a red uh, capital N here indicating this is north, okay? So, that, so what I'd like to do is go to the view settings and turn on uh, the meridians and, and close, right? And then go back one more time, turn on the ecliptic and close. So the, so the meridian is the green line and the ecliptic is the red line. You can see it here, it says ecliptic, okay? So the meridian is the... Longitude that 
goes from north to south, while the ecliptic is the circle that, or the elliptical path of the orbit of the planets around the sun. Okay, let's go back to the view settings, and we can turn on uh, DDS. I'm not sure that's what, what this is for because it doesn't really show me anything. And what's important is turn on the Milky Way galaxy. And as we turn on the Milky Way galaxy and use the mouse, look at that. We just found the brightest star in the sky. This is serious. This is this is uh, Najmat al-Shara, okay, serious, uh, or Isis. Uh, we just got lucky there, okay. This is also Betelgeuse. You, you may have seen a movie called Betelgeuse. It's after this, this star right here. And this one is Rigel. Interesting. So I, I'm going to actually uh, change my plan and I'm going to go ahead and turn on my constellations because this is an important part of this story, okay? So as we go, come closer to this, we turn on the, the constellations, which means a, the triangulation between different stars, right? And you can see clearly here that that these three stars are aligned with each other. Not only that, but they are aligned with this star over here. So this is the belt of Orion, and this is Sirius, the Najmat al-Shara, okay? Uh, that is the brightest star in the sky, in the night sky. And that's why it was worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. So let's find out why this is called the belt of Orion. We're going to turn on the constellations, and we're going to turn on the constellation art, and it shows, sure enough, it shows Orion, who is the uh, the warrior in the Greek mythology, I believe. And here it is. This is Orion. Okay, so I just want to make sure you see Orion. Okay, so uh, here is Orion. Okay, that's Orion, and that's his belt, right? That he wears around his waist. Okay, so uh, so. Let's uh, take a deeper look at this. Uh, Sirius, which is the star, the brightest star in the sky, is located in the uh, in the heart of the neck of the dog of this is the dog of Orion, okay. And uh, this star is called Mirzam, okay, which is an Arabic name. So, uh, incidentally, there is uh, many many stars that were named by the uh, Arabs way back then about a thousand years ago, so the, the name kind of st or stayed, didn't, and NASA did not change them. Um, I'm going to zoom in here to look at Orion, and uh, we can see here, uh, first, this is the this is the uh, leg of Orion, right here, right? And um, this star right here is called Rigel, okay? Some people think it's Regal in English. No, it's, it's actually called Rigel. Okay, um, and uh, let's zoom in on the on these three stars. You may have seen them already. Uh, this these stars are the belt of Orion, and they are called Al Mintaqa, Al uh, Nilam, and Al Nitaq. Okay, so the in Arabic, these are Arabic named stars. Beautiful, huh? Okay. Um, so I'm going to turn off the our, the constellations and I'm going to uh, go by my plan. Okay, so we in the settings we turned on all these different features. That's good. Then we're going to come over here and then we're going to uh, uh, turn off this margin here, and then I'm going to uh, change the location. So this is the location right here, and I'll. I'll change it from uh, Sitka, Alaska. This is uh, this is Sitka, Alaska. Okay, so it's a little old Russian town that was bought by the United States about hundred years ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for uh, another city which is closer to to the equator. Okay, so Singapore. Did I misspell it? Singapore. I'm going to search for it. You know where Singapore is, right? It's uh, between Malaysia and Indonesia. It's near, it's near the equator. So, um, 
So that's Singapore, that's Malaysia, and this is Indonesia. Let's use this location. Okay. And as you can see, the sky is different in Singapore near the equator. Okay. So you start to see the Milky Way galaxy better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, turn on the deep sky objects. Okay. As soon as I do that, I see, I see this one, which is what? What is this one? Messier. Okay. Uh, it's hard to navigate, huh? So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, turn on the landscape, right? And, uh, and, and make sure that we are oriented correctly. So we were looking below us. Now we're looking above us. So this is a landscape here. And, uh, and the, the best view is, of course, to, for the a uh, night nice sky in the south hemisphere. So you can as you can see the curve, the curve of the ecliptic in Singapore near the equator is is very uh, sharp. It's away it's above us, while in in Alaska it's it's more uh, it's more like um, hidden. Okay, uh, or low no low towards the horizon. All right, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at, uh, we, are, we are standing in the middle of this. We're looking at the southern hemisphere. This is south, this is west, and of course this will be east. Okay. And um, this is the ecliptic of the, where the planets are orbiting. Okay, you can see Mars near the ecliptic. You can see the sun. Let's, move, let's zoom in here on the sun. Okay, so this is, this is the sun. This is Mercury, or Atarid, and this is Venus, or Az-Zuhra, okay? And they happen to be near the Sun right now, which is, which is, uh, which is great. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, I'm not actually used to this, uh, this guy, because it's, it's not near where I live. So um, let's turn on... Uh, the atmosphere atmosphere will, will make it day night day or, or night time okay of course you can't see the stars at, at day daytime so we don't need it right <laughs> then we're gonna turn on the constellations and then turn on the constellation art which will help us navigate through different constellations so uh, you may have heard of you know Leo and Cancer and Sagittarius and and Aries and Taurus but these are located along the along the ecliptic, right? And th these are, all of these Buruj or constellations are, are located along the ecliptic. While the other ones that we've been talking about, Orion and this guy, the dog of Orion and this guy, these are, out, these are not part of the zodiac signs, okay? So, let's, let's take a look. Here is Leo, we are looking at Leo right now. This is the lion. Okay, this is Cancer, the crab. Okay, this is Gemini, Al Jawza, so uh, Al Al Asad, Burj Al Asad, Burj uh, Saratan, and Burj Al Jawza. Over here is Virgo, Burj Al Adra. Virgo is a huge constellation. We have here Libra, which is the uh, Burj Al Mizan, is right here. Okay, and um, of course the other constellations are behind us because we are we are looking at the night sky in, in, the, in the southern hemisphere. So they are they are they go they go under they go under the uh, the, the earth. Okay, they, they, these go under the earth. Okay, so. Um, what else are we going to look for? Uh, one of my favorite things to look for is going to be uh, uh, Athraya, which is, which is located in the constellation of Taurus. But then, uh, where is Taurus? Taurus is going to be near Gemini, right? If this is Gemini, and this is Cancer, and this is Leo, it means that Taurus is located right here. If you can see the, the head of the, of the bull, Right there, right? This is the bull. So, tor so the Thuraya is right there, but we can't see it because there is a tree there. So I'm going to turn off the landscape. 
and then and then try to uh, look at look at Taurus. So uh, I hope I, you don't get dizzy because I'm turning this around. Okay, here we go. So here is the here's Taurus, right? Here is the here's the, the the head of the bull right there, right? And his horns, his legs right here. So here is the Athreya. Isn't that great? It looks it looks just like, you know, a light fixture. You can zoom in on the Athreya. It is is really beautiful. So it's made up of seven major bright very bright stars and other minor stars as well. So that's Athreya. I've always wondered, you know, myself where is Athreya? You know, why people talk about Athreya and I can't see it because there's too, too many clouds in the sky. So that's Athreya, it's in the, in, the, in the Taurus. There's also uh, the uh, very famous uh, auspicious star called Adabaran, right? In Arabic. Still, the name is still Ixtix. Um, in, um, so we said Orion is not part of the uh, zodiac signs. Check this out. We have a satellite dish. This is a Starlink satellite dish. And this is another one here. Right? So these are the, the satellites that Elon Musk, you know, SpaceX have put up in orbit. And you can see, you know what's funny about this is that they run in a in a certain line. So this is we have one satellite here, another one over here, another one over here. So they, they form a a line, right? They, because they are, they provide internet service across the globe. Okay, now because the satellite is being selected, the web is, uh, the software is trying to track the satellite. Okay, so if I don't select it, it doesn't track it anymore. All right, so let's look for the planets, shall we? Here we have, we just got lucky, we found Uranus, which is really far away, right? It's in the west hemisphere. Then we have Mars, right? Here are, here's Elon Musk again, one more time. Yeah. Um, then we have uh, the two or three stars in the constellation of Gemini. This is Gemini, right? Gemini is supposed to be the two twins in the Roman mythology. Two brothers, I think, or two twins. I'm not sure. Uh, these are the, you know, they they are the founders of the city of Rome. So we have Pollux, is one of them, and Castor is another one. And we have here at the at the foot of the of this Gemini, Alhenna. Isn't that nice? It's a nice, nice uh, name for uh, for the foot of Gemini, Alhenna. Let's go to Cancer. We don't see any famous stars over here, but there must be some, you know, so just we can just see, see them. Let's go to Leo. Okay, so I'm going to turn this around. Okay, so it's, uh, it's very hard to navigate this. I'm sorry if it's spinning around like crazy. Uh, so I'm going to click on this one. This is the this is the heart. Oops, sorry. Okay, here we go. This is this is the heart of of Leo. I'm gonna stop trying to turn around. This is the heart. This is the heart of Leo. You know, uh, in the old days, they used to use the word qalb al asad or the heart of Leo. This is the qalb al asad. Okay. Uh, called Regulus. Okay, and I'm going to turn back the, the landscape on because it's just it driving me crazy here. All right, here we go. So, we, we're going this way from right to left. We, we, this, is, this is Leo, this is Taurus, this is Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo. Okay, what's the famous star in Virgo? Let's, let's take a look. What is this star? Spica. Spica is a very auspicious star, by the way. It's the star, star of the harvest. Uh, and then near between between Virgo and between Libra, right now we can see the the Sun, Mercury, and Venus. They're there. You can't really see them unless you zoom in a little bit. 
Yeah, so this is the sun. Yeah, and if you click on something, of course, it's going to tell you uh, some information about that uh, planet or object. So if you click on Venus, yeah, it's, it says it's the second planet from the sun. It is sometimes called Earth's sister or twin, and so it's like really nice information and radius and all that information. Okay. Uh, I just saw a word in Arabic. Zanab al-Shamali, right? Or Zub al-Shamali. This is definitely an Arabic word right there. Yeah, in the translation of, of Libra. And uh, we've seen Sagittarius before, so, you know, again, if a if I didn't catch the, your sign, I apologize for that. But this is just a little bit... In the beginning, it's, it's difficult to navigate because it just keeps spinning. So you have to kind of get uh, used to it. So let's say that we want to search for a specific uh, planet. So we can come over here and, and look for, for example, Jupiter. Okay, so it's found Jupiter here. It says planet. Okay, click on it. And it found the Jupiter. Where is it? It's below below us. So let me turn off the landscape. And where is Jupiter right now? It's in Pisces. If you if you watch the zodiac signs uh, on YouTube, it will tell you that Jupiter is in Pisces right now. So uh, that's uh, some some astrologers use that uh, as a guide. Some of, some use other software as well. But this is definitely a the real deal because this is real time. Okay, let's search for another uh, planet. Let's search for uh, uh, Saturn. So there's two objects here called Saturn, Saturn planet, and Saturn nebula. Let's search for the planet, and it's right here next to the moon. So okay, so we found we found two things. We found Saturn, but we also found the moon as well, right? You can you can tell by looking at it that this moon is is in half phase right now. And where is it? Where is Saturn? Is in in the constellation of Capricorn, in the goat, you know, and the moon is in Aquarius, which is true. That's exactly where the moon is today. Today is, by the way, November second, twenty twenty two. You know, in Arabic, اثنين تشرين الثاني Okay, so uh, the moon is in uh, is in Aquarius today. Okay, so uh, uh, th this is another one that's really interesting. Caught my eye. This is the the constellation of the eagle, right? Uh, if you ever been to the Scouts, you know that there is a, they use the eagle symbol, right? And they use the the wolf, this is the wolf, and this is the eagle, right? So the at the neck of the of the of the eagle constellation is a star called Atair. Atair means the bird in English. So uh, beautiful, beautiful, you know. I, you know, I can't get enough of this. You know, this is Vega. Vega is is another uh, beautiful star that is. Um, in the constellation of Lyra, Lyra. Okay, so uh, you may have heard of uh, you know Lyra or Lyra, uh, which is the harp, right? This is the harp. They're playing the music, it's a music instrument. So this is where it comes from, and Vega is a, is a very auspicious star. There's another star here in this constellation called Denab. Which is the the tail of this uh, goose? Yeah, it's beautiful. I can I just can't get enough of this. Um, if we you can turn on the azimuth grid and the equatorial grid and the landscape, and then it will allow us to uh, kind of find our way very quickly here, right? So we said the uh, we said the the Jupiter, the Moon, and Saturn are below the ground right now, uh, and we are looking right now at the western sky. So we can turn this around, look at the southern sky, and we, we the wheel. Uh, when you roll the wheel on the mouse, you'll be able to zoom in and zoom out. And, uh, you know, again, this is the sky in Singapore. Um, so, for example, if you want to change it, uh, as I said before, you can go here, click on settings, 
and uh, no, not this one. Sorry, over here, uh, over here. Search uh, for a city by name. For example, you can search for uh, Beirut, Lebanon. Okay, and you have different uh, Beirut, but it doesn't matter. It's close enough. The we take the first one. So this is Beirut. Okay. Uh, Lebanon, All right, and it's Ras Beirut. Okay, great. So let's do it. Um, we can use this location, and uh, what it, it may it may seem like nothing happened, but in reality, if you look carefully, you can see that the uh, the ecliptic, the ecliptic, east. In west are now visible and this arc is a little bit shallower right in Singapore it was much higher and in uh, Alaska it was much lower okay so so this is Alaska okay and then in the north this is this is uh, Lebanon and this is uh, equator okay so just to kind of uh, so you kind of so you know okay so you know where, where, what's going on all right so we're now in Lebanon right now and uh, we're looking at this you can see in the southern hemisphere right we're looking straight south this is due south this is the azimuth of the south uh, and these are the, the meridians of the of the earth and of course, this is spherical, uh, you know, projection. So, so we have here Orion. One more, one more time, we have the horse constellation. We have the dog of the Orion, uh, and we have, um, you know, all the way over here. Uh, barely, we can barely see Jupiter in Pisces. You can see Aries, the the lamb, you know, the Taurus, right, uh, with Thuraya. Uh, and then Mars is in between. Mars is actually in Gemini right now. So it's going to be in Gemini for the next uh, six months. We have Cancer and we have Leo. All right, I think this is good uh, stuff. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. We hope that you enjoyed this video and find it informative. And if you did, please feel free to subscribe to this channel and leave a comment below about any topic that you would like us to cover in the future. Thank you and take care.